Hello and welcome back. If you're a subscriber, you're probably surprised to see a different game here, but if not, you're probably thinking, look at this dude. Well, as you can see, maybe this is the start of a series called Everything Fallout 4 Did Wrong. And before you get triggered, yes, there will also be a series about everything it did right, because it did a lot of things right. As a quick disclaimer, not all of these opinions are my own, some of them are from Reddit, but most of them are my opinions. As you can tell by the title, this one is about how I don't like Fallout 4's approach towards character development. Fallout 4 has divided the fanbase perhaps more fiercely than even the release of Fallout 3 in its new approach. People have been talking about this for ages, but it's a topic that interests me, so I'm talking about it whether you care or not. So my biggest issue with Fallout 4 is how it handles the player character. People got mad at Fallout 3 when it decided we were to be a vault dweller with daddy issues, which directly affects how the game plays out. Out. And actually, I do kind of get that. People want to be their own character, but at the same time, you could just ignore it and even be a real bastard of a person. In Fallout 4, you're a warrior if you're a man, and a law graduate if you're a woman. First of all, what happens to being an everyman with their own story? This doesn't bother me as much as the fact that I imagine the only reason you're given this story is to make the player's combat intuition seem believable, but what if you're a woman? Then you're just a lawyer for the sake of it? Because, you know, when you play as a woman in Fallout, the combat is exactly the same. But why not keep the past ambiguous? It just seems kind of inane to me. The purpose of this could, in my eyes, only be to dumb it down and appeal to people who want a typical badass character, or a strong female protagonist, which, newsflash, we could always have before. Also, the war hero aspect really bothers me because it sounds really positive. That may sound weird as something to complain about, but... Like, it's decided that you're brave, virtuous, and whatever else from the start. But what if you wanted your character to be some sort of dark and evil skinny nerd hacker type who relies on computer science? The lawyer option interests me as it shows how people with decent futures had them taken away and are forced to become violent, etc. But it's genuinely difficult to be bad in Fallout 4. Sure, you can kill random people, but a lot of the important people are unkillable, which annoys me because their deaths would actually mean something. And don't get me wrong, I'm not the type of person to just kill everyone I see because I understand it cuts quest lines off, but it is a playstyle people go for, and I respect that. Why not give us the choice? There will always be essential NPCs who just sit down and then will always get to kill me. In Megaton, for example, or Megaton, you could pl <laughs> you could blow the place up for some caps or kill everyone and open that armory up. In Diamond City, once you kill one person, you're basically doomed to be hunted down by an immortal army of important misfits. There's no payoff. I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to be evil in this game, and I also kind of can't. People argue that actions speak louder than words, and they're right, but there's just no nuance to the character you play. At most, you can kill some unimportant loser, like me, and like that's fine because they don't matter in an objective sense. There are so few opportunities in this game to kill someone whose death would actually make people stop and think. There are no choices you can make or paths you can take that will make people go <laughs> If you join the Institute, the feared boogeyman faction if you will, Nothing seems to change in terms of story or character. Yes, there are synth patrolling, which is surely a really bad thing and you'd be blamed for it, but it just seems that nothing changes. Not only this, but the only reason I was interested in joining it in the first place was to save my son. Making joining the bad faction so closely tied with completing the objective you set out to complete from the beginning of the game and finding your beloved son is a huge mistake. Everyone loves their kids. Well, Almost everyone. The Institute is already ideal, in fact, if you're more pragmatic than you are emotional, especially in survival if you care more about the easy access to safety, water, aid and food than the effects you're having on the surface world. So you didn't need to add another justification for being a bad boy Bethesda. God. Your character is almost pushed to fill some specific shoes, like a guy who loves his family and has to do some questionable things to get his son back. Granted, I know even psychos might love their families. Anything really bad with lasting effects that you can do is justified by your idea of the greater good. And in a way, this is quite cool, but I don't think it's too self-aware. A lot of the people you take out on the way are genuinely standing in the way of you due to strong radical beliefs and aren't necessarily good or bad based on what you think. So it's not even especially morally grey, it could just be empty. Of course I can see that in real life, few things are absolutely bad or good, but consider this. I didn't want to kill anyone. That's right, the benefits and drawbacks of all this game's factions left me in a situation where I would have felt selfish to get involved. I just wanted everyone to get along. I felt so bad pulling the trigger. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to sit this one out. And I know it's no surprise that you can't go through an 18 rated violent ass game without killing someone, but this is a different kind of killing people. 
This is killing people that you could technically reason with if the game gave you the chance, and I just... I just don't like it all that much. I mean, I made the NCR side with the Brotherhood in New Vegas, and while you might say, but lens flare eyes TV, games take you on an emotional journey. I'm going to finish with this. Those murders that I had to carry out were the game's choice, and if I wanted to advance in the game or the story, I had no choice in the matter. This, along with so many other things, created such a poor character disconnect for me. One scene in games such as Mirror's Edge Catalyst, where the character's interest or those of the game and its flow contradict yours. We all know Bethesda wants and expects us to do certain things, and obviously I'm not going to criticise a developer for pushing the player in a direction because, well, it sometimes needs to be done in order for a narrative to exist. While there are plenty of quests to do, none of them really seem to offer you that same freedom that previous games gave you. Most of the decision making that you're shoehorned into boils down to either shooting or not shooting people, and I honestly think that's a pretty big letdown for a game with such a rich history of gameplay. So that's all from me today. Sorry this episode took so long, I had exams and caught the flu, so if I sound a little bit gross in this video, that's why. Like I said, Half-Life will be returning in videos, but I'm definitely not just a Half-Life channel, so this video is a bit of a step in a different direction. Of course, if you enjoy this video, don't hesitate to hit that like button, maybe subscribe and perhaps even tell your friends. You can find my Discord and my Twitter in the description below. And if you're really feeling generous and want to help the channel grow, I'm putting the Patreon link down there for the first time. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.